up nerds i'm bammed and this is ctf and cigars by bam ctf where i light up a cigar and talk about ctf and security related things um this week i had uh, a cigar lined up and apparently i had smoked it already so i'm going back to one of the old ones that i've already done but i had a my father flor de las antillas uh I'll, I'll have to get another one of those they're pretty good but this week i'm going back to one of my favorites the oliva Serie v milanio Maduro. Um, I've talked about this one before. I've probably smoked at least one, maybe two on the show so far. Uh, this is one that I always keep on hand. It starts off very uh, floral, very earthy. It moves into being more, more woody, and then it uh, has a bit of a peppery, zesty kick at the end uh, once you get to the final third. So this is a it's a good cigar. I've done a more thorough review in the past if you want to go back and look at past episodes. I'm just going to light this up and get started. And I need to restock my humidor. Just haven't had time this week. Let's get that started. Yeah, that's... Like I said, it starts off nice and floral and earthy. Um, very, very nice, very enjoyable cigar. But yeah, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about cigars today. We're going to jump right in and look into some hacking and some game cheats. So a, I've been doing this the past few weeks. I uh, missed last week because I was um, I spent the, the past week on a, uh, a retreat where we were doing a lot of uh, coding, coming up with some new projects. Maybe in a few weeks we might be available to discuss that publicly. But for now, we'll just say it's a secret private project that you can't know about. <laughs> but yeah, this week we're going to look at uh, Cheat Engine again. And uh, in the past, I've done some some uh, open source games. Uh, I've looked at a game designed to be hacked. Uh, but today I'm going to do something that's uh, a little more popular. Um, so, so just a disclaimer before I get started. Do not use game cheats on public online games. Um, if you do, you're just being an asshole. Now, that being said, all, all this that we're doing here with, with Cheat Engine and with these game hacks, what we're really doing is we're exploring reverse engineering, but from a different, a different angle. We've, we've spent a few weeks looking at CrackMe's, spent a few weeks looking at, at Cheat Engine. I'm going to do that again this week. But then I'm going to take some of that, and we're going to look in the future at the practical application of all this. So we've been talking about how to do this for fun. Um, uh, for for CTFs and games, and then just these these uh, cheat engine. Really, it is just for fun and for educational purposes. Again, don't don't do this when you're actually playing with people online. <coughs> but what I want to do in the future, um, if not next week, week after, actually look at how to use these reverse engineering skills in an actual security related role in a job. And we're going to take some uh, malware and reverse that and you can look at what you can do with reverse engineering malware and using some of these same tools i'm not sure cheat engine will come into play but definitely gidra and ida and um, different disassemblers and decompilers um, and we can see what we can do with that so that's coming up in the future uh, but this week you know i decided to do something that uh just have a little fun look at a a common game that you see now and just to show that the techniques that we're using with cheat engine aren't just for free open source games um aren't just for games designed to be hacked but can actually be used for common games that people are actually playing so this week we're going to take a look at among us so there have been um a lot of uh other people have done some among us cheats uh i've seen that around the internet people have been using um cheat engine for it and and uh it looks like the guys who wrote among us didn't really think about cheaters when they first launched a game so some a lot of these hacks still work uh that being said i have read that the creators of among us have been adding uh some anti-cheat uh technology 
So you got to keep that in mind. If you do try some of these cheats out on a public game, uh, they have been deploying anti-cheat, so you might find yourself uh, kicked from a server or even banned. Uh, so I do not recommend doing this on a public game ever, but if you just want to play around locally and learn some stuff, um, go for it. All right, so let's jump right into the fun. All right, got Cheat Engine open here. And let me find my, where did I put my VM? There it is. All right, let's launch Among Us. So if you've been paying attention at all to the online gaming community, you've probably seen Among Us. Uh, it's been really popular this year as everybody's been stuck at home. Um, it's a game where you're a little person here. I, I forget what they're called. Uh, you're crewmates on a ship, and you are trying to uh, repair the ship before you all get killed because one or two of the uh, members of your party are a shape-shifting alien who's disguised himself as a crewmate. So as the imposter, your job is to, you know, stop the uh, repair of the ship, sabotage it, and kill everybody on board. <coughs> um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So there's a couple different things we can do here to make it uh, easier to play. Um, let's, uh, we're going to start off just with free play. So this just lets us run around the map, we can pretend like we're playing, uh, we can do some tasks, we can also make ourselves an imposter, we kind of practice what being an imposter can be. So here I'm an imposter, which means I can go around and kill crewmates. So one of the things you'll notice, uh, just to start off, when, when I become an imposter, there's a kill countdown. So this is the kill cooldown. Um, essentially, as you run around, you can, you can see I've got a sabotage menu there on the on the right. But as I approach a crew member, I can kill them. So they're dead, and now I've got a 15-second timer before I can kill someone else. So if I'm the imposter here, uh, one of the things that you've got to watch out for, if somebody sees you killing a crewmate, then um, you know they can report it, and, and you can get voted off the ship. Um, so if you can kill people more quickly... Uh, without waiting for that cooldown, then, then you can kill them before they can report you. So let's see if we can play with that kill kill uh, countdown timer or the cooldown. So first I've got Cheat Engine open. I've got to attach it to the Among Us process. And what we're going to do, we're going to start off scanning for um, the kill uh, cooldown. So... This is a timer. Timers are typically going to be a float. So we're going to assume that this is a float. Now, right now, the kill cooldown is, is uh, finished, so we're going to assume it's zero. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things about any of reverse engineering or um, hacking or writing cheats. You've got to make some education, educated guesses and test things and see what happens and keep going from there. Um, I haven't done this a lot, and if you watched uh, a few weeks ago, I did one where everything kept failing on me. Um, it is definitely a trial and error, um, not something you normally want to do in a live demo. Uh, but hey, we're this this what we do here on CTF and Cigars. We we like to uh, to fail as when it, as well as succeed, just to show what happens. All right, so I've got it. Uh, I've scanned for zero because we know the countdown is currently zero. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to catch it right at 15 and, and, and so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan for something just that's currently zero, but on my next scan, it's going to be larger than 10. So I'm going to kill someone, and then we will scan for a number that's bigger than 10. All right, so my countdown's currently at, what, 13? Okay, and it keeps going down. So let's keep doing a decreased value every time it goes down. All right, this looks, yeah, that looks like a good option. So I added that to my list. Let's see what happens if I just change this to 10. All right, that's it. We can see it's starting to count down. So we found our countdown timer. That was pretty quick. 
something's bound to go wrong later because things never usually go this smoothly. Okay, so something we can do here. Um, we can check this active box here in Cheat Engine. And what this does is Cheat Engine will then continually write zero to this address. So this is actually a memory address. So this, this is the address of the location in the memory on the system. Um, now I've set it to basically freeze on zero. Uh, and what we'll see here when I kill this person, it went to 15 and then immediately dropped. So uh, that's Cheat Engine immediately rewriting that to zero. So if there was someone else here, I could have killed them immediately. <clears throat> now, that being said, if I close this game and come back, this address is going to change. And I won't be able to use this same address. So that's just because of the way memory is handled in Windows. You don't have static addresses to every variable. They're, they're constantly going to be different. So if I, even if I started a new game, this value may very well be different. So I've got to find a reliable way to find the address for this variable in memory and uh, be able to continually reuse that address. <clears throat> so we're going to do that with pointers. Uh, let, me, let me name this so I remember what it is. So this is the field cooldown. And actually, we're going to do a few of these, so we'll call this one 1. All right, so there's our kill cooldown. Now, what I want to do, uh, we're going to look for a pointer. So a pointer is a um, memory address, or it, it's it's a variable that points to a memory address. Uh, so so what we're looking for are um, addresses that point to a different address. And there's some ways I could do that. Like, for example, I've got this address here. I could actually search for this. Let's do that real quick. Um, all right, so I've got an address space that's going to be four bytes. It's going to be in hex. And there's the address. So if I scan for that. All right, well, that didn't work. That's fine. There's another way of doing this. Um, we can use some built-in functionality here in Cheat Engine to, uh, to find some pointers. So first, we're going to generate a pointer map. Uh, let's see, I was playing with this last night. Let me kill all my previous. Uh, all right, hold on. I'm going to clean up my uh, my work from last night. Let's just delete all these. All right, so we don't need those. Okay, so this is the kill cooldown. So I'm creating a pointer map. So this is Cheat Engine scanning all the memory and looking for pointers. It's going to make a map of those. This will take a minute for it to scan. Okay, so we've got that map. And now what we want to do... Um, well, okay, before we do that, let's... Take a look at, find, let's find out what writes or accesses this address. So we've done this before. So this shows us these are all functions that are writing to the um, that address space we're looking at, which has the kill cooldown. So there's a lot of every CPU tick, it looks like it checks for something. And what I wanted to point out here, if you look at all of these, we're moving some values around, but we're always moving to this EBX plus 44. So there's something... Uh, um, so EBX is a CPU register. So this is something that's that's uh, it's going to be an address that's stored in memory uh, on the CPU, and that uh, um, plus forty four is then going to be the offset. <coughs> so uh, what we'll see here, see how this is consistently. This is ESI plus forty four, um, and we've got ESI plus forty four again. But if we look at this in more detail, we see EBX is this address zero six FA four C eight zero. But if we look here in this um, this uh, this section of code, we can see that ESI yeah, ESI is the same address. So what we can make a guess, uh, just based again based making the educational get edu educated guess based on our current knowledge of programming and uh, reverse engineering and, and how programs work. 
that this address space probably points to some sort of structure, uh, probably related to different game variables. And then this plus 44, that's going to be the offset. So that's going to be the location in that structure where the cool, kill cooldown is stored. And we can examine that. Let's take a look at our memory viewer. And let's look at the dissect data structures. Let's make a new structure. We'll call this uh, uh, game object. All right, so Cheat Engine's made some guesses about data types uh, based on you know the context, and it's trying to tell us, um, show us all the different variables and ob or in this object. So this address space is probably going to be an object, <laughs> and all of these things are going to be different settings related to the current game. And if we look at 44, so this is the byte offset 44. This is where our kill cooldown is in this object. So if I to find somebody else to kill and watch closely after I kill them you should see this is now zero it's going to start changing uh, starting at 15 and counting down okay well um, okay yeah so it, that didn't work oh uh, my bad I forgot I had this set to uh, freeze uh so okay let's let's find somebody else to kill and i'll show this again but before we do that i'm going to enable this uh, speed hack <coughs> uh this is something in cheat engine that will just speed the whole game up uh it speeds everything up so i could run around a bit quicker uh, i'm not exactly sure how this works i was going to look into that but i haven't yet um i'm assuming it uh, somehow affects the cpu clock or the the ticks possibly for that game um, but at any rate, it just makes everything in the game run quicker. And let's see, where did I put that data structure? Did I close it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so now this time when I kill this person, we should see this timer go up from 0 to 15 and then count down. There we go. Okay, actually, it looks like that was the last person, so I've killed everyone. Um, and the timer is... Oh, it's looking at the wrong data type. Okay, so again, it's trying to decide the data type, and it doesn't always do so accurately. Let's see if I can change this to a float. All right, so now that this is a float, let's see if that looks better. There we go. So we can see the countdown timer here, which matches up with this one. Uh, if you notice, it went really quickly because I've got that speed hack in place. So these other variables, if we wanted to take some time and explore them, we could probably figure out more about how the game is set up. Uh, but we'll we'll come back to that later. I'll go back to what I was doing. So I did that um, pointer map. Now we're going to do a pointer scan. And uh, the point of doing the, the, what we just did, though, is we were looking for that offset. So the offset was 44. The pointer scan, when we run this, it's going to help us look for um, offsets, or we're looking for pointers to this address and specifically to that offset 44. So we have a pointer map that's going to save us time. We're going to use that. And we're going to look for a pointer that ends with the offset of 44 because that's where the offset is to our to our ad, to our uh, um, variable that we're looking for. All right, so we'll do that. We'll need to give this a name too. So it's saving all this data so we can go back and reference it later going to do a scan. All right, now I've got about 400,000 pointers here. Uh, most of these will not work, and they won't all be consistent once I reload the game. So what I've done, I've saved all this data. Uh, in order to get more accurate pointer, uh, what I want to do is go ahead and close out Among Us, and then we will start it up again and do another scan and compare the results and try to see if there's uh, some common pointers that we can use that are more consistent after the game's been reloaded and, and basically just do the same thing. So we're going to kind of redo everything we just did. Uh, let's see. We'll start off with free play. We will attach to the Among Us process. 
we want to keep our current list because uh, we're gonna we might want to re reference that again. But uh, let's turn that speed hack back on. I don't want to run around too slow. Oh, and I'm not the imposter. Hold on. Let's go back to being an imposter. All right, now I will kill them. We see 15 seconds, and here's that memory address we had before. Not changing at all. It's no longer relevant. Because <coughs> now that we've opened and started a new game, um, that variable is stored in a different place in memory. So that's what we're trying to do is find a consistent place in memory we can use in order to, to track this between games. All right, so we're going to start over what we did before. We'll do a scan. Uh, it's going to be a float. It's going to be zero right now because we haven't, uh, the countdown's at zero. While that's running, let's see. Here's another player. So we'll do the same thing. Let's see. We want oh, something bigger than 10. Oh, let's turn that speed hack off. I don't want this to go too quickly. All right. Kill. I'll scan. And then we want something that's decreased. All right. So every time it ticks down, we want something that's decreased. All right. And then now we know it's back to zero. So we'll do another scan for zero. Okay, so we can see these values here continue to change, but this one is still zero. So this is probably the variable again. Okay, what did I do? All right, somehow I triggered a vote. Not sure how I did that. Let's see, these guys are still dead. Let's kill somebody else and see if the uh, timer goes down. There we go. We can see the timer. Okay, so that is the correct one. So let's label that one. Now we're going to do the same thing with the pointer map. So this is the pointer map for the uh, the second time we've run the game. Let that run. <clears throat> yeah, this is just locating all the pointers in memory for this game, making a map of them. Then we're going to do a pointer scan for this address. We will use our pointer map that we just generated but now we can compare results with a previously saved pointer map. So that's going to be the scan that we did earlier. So that's this first one. We can choose the address we're looking for. That was kill cooldown one. <coughs> so it's comparing the pointers maps between the, uh, the first time we ran the game and the second one. We're going to find some common values that we can use. All right, so our offset's the same. It's 44. And let's let that run. This is still going to give us a lot of results, but then we can try to narrow that down to something more useful. All right, so we're down to 47,000 from 400,000. <clears> so let's, let's look at these results real quick. Um, so we start off with the base address. Uh, so this is going to be uh, usually a DLL file or an EXE file, and then there's an offset. So what we're saying is we've loaded this unityplayer.dll in memory. Uh, it's going to have a base address somewhere, which is going to probably be different every time you load the, the game. But then at a certain offset, there's a pointer. And at the offset of that pointer, there's another pointer, and so on and so forth, until we get to the actual game data object that we were looking at before. And at that offset 44, we get this value here. So we've got a pointer to uh, a pointer with an offset to a pointer with an offset to a pointer with an offset and so on. 
until we get to the actual address we're looking for, uh, which is going to be the uh, the kill cooldown variable. Now, even though we've compared these a couple times, a lot of these addresses will still change every time we load the program. So the fewer uh, offsets we have to worry about, the better we're going to be, um, the, the more direct we can. So if we could actually find something, say, in one of these DLLs, that had an offset that was directly pointing to this kill cooldown, that would be ideal. I don't think we're going to find that in this case. Uh, but I've done, I've changed my sort order based on the, the offset. So we can see I do have one here in the game assembly DLL, um, which, which is uh, going to be the one we, we want because this is actually specific to this game. Unlike Unity Player, which is going to be more generic. Um, related to the, the graphics engine uh, or the, the Unity engine. So we got this game assembly DLL at this off this location. It's got a pointer here, here, and we're going to here. Let's, let's try either one of these will probably work. All right, so we're gonna try this, see if this worked. This is a pointer to kill cooldown. We'll freeze that. Let's see. Let's find somebody else to kill. Should be somebody in the admin room. Yep. All right. That did not work. So let's try one of these others. Let's see. Did I close that? Looks like I did. Okay. Let's do another pointer scan. overwrite the last one because it didn't work. <clears throat> Again, this is always, always going to be a matter of trial and error. All right, so we've got our list again. Uh, let's see. This is the one I think I have tried. Let's try this other one. I'll leave my pointers map open this time. Well, let's let's just see what happens if I change this value to ten. So I should turn off the freeze. All right, that didn't work. Okay, that one works. All right, so none of these are working. That's fantastic. If I turn this off. All right. Well, let's um I guess let's try it again. Close this out. And delete these pointers here. As I said, trial and error. That's how that's all this works. our game up let's attach to it all right we're going to do a new scan we're going to start off scanning for zero then we'll scan for something bigger than 10. Let's go over here and kill somebody Once again, I forgot to become an imposter.
<laughs> Alright, kill. Oh, I, I fucked that up. Alright, let's see if this will still work. Increased value. Alright, and then it should be back to zero now. All right, looks like we missed it, so we will try again. We'll do another scan of zero. Go up here and kill somebody. All right, we're going to scan for bigger than 10. And then a decreased value. That may be it. Let's, uh, let's turn that speed hack back on. All right, so let's watch this, see if this works. There we go. All right, so we've got the value again. <clears throat> let's generate a new pointer map. I swear this worked perfectly last night. Maybe they patched the game. I don't know. Or maybe I just need to try again. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's do another pointer scan. We will use our saved map. So this is the one we just generated. Let's just compare with... The last scan we did, maybe I did something wrong the first time around. Pointer was 44, offset was 44, okay. All right, let's see if we get some decent pointers this time around. As soon as this is done running. Of course, it's taking longer this time. See, everything started off way too early, too easy. I knew I knew something would go wrong. But hey, if this doesn't work this time, we'll jump on, we'll, we'll take a look at something else. Want to, want to do a little bit more digging into some data structures while, while we're at it. This is taking a while. Hmm. Not sure what to think about that. Got four threads running. We've got 23,000 results so far. It's still working. Let's just give it a few more minutes and see what happens. So uh, how was everybody's Thanksgiving, huh? Uh, I smoked a turkey. It turned out beautifully. It was delicious. Um, got, I got a new, a new smoker that's, uh, um, an IOT based. So I'm going to, um, see if I can reverse engineer that in the, in the next few weeks. So that might be something fun I can talk about later if I, uh, if I find anything about that. And all right, I'm getting tired of waiting. Let's, let's kill this. All right, let's just start over. Why not? This is my show and I can do what I want. All right, let me just delete everything I've done so far. All right.
right, all that's gone. Let's delete these. All right, I know this address is still good. Yeah, I can control the timer. Let's rename this to just kill cooldown one and we'll start over. So let's make a new pointer map. Maybe I missed a step earlier. Let me make sure I have my offsets right. So let's check again, find out what axis is this address. Okay, so the offset is 44. That's still consistent. We'll do a pointer scan. Use the pointer map we just made. Pointers in with an offset of 44. So that's going to limit our results. All right. Uh, well, everything else looks right. So let's run this. Should give us another 400,000 results or so. <clears throat> okay, this is actually, this is doing something. We noticed before it didn't spend any time writing. So I don't think it was actually saving results. So I don't, I don't know, must have done something wrong when I generated an earlier map. Maybe I selected the wrong one and was uh, kind of screwed up the comparison. It's still taking a while, though, so that's that's interesting. Um, I don't know if something's slowing down my computer or what. <laughs> but, you know, if everything worked as intended, this wouldn't be a live demo. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely something weird going on here. So, anybody in the chat today? How's it going, guys? I think, uh, Maybe a small crew, thanks to the holidays. All right, well, we're not going to spend all day sitting here watching this thing count. Um, oh, I reported it. That's what happened. Okay. Let's uh, let's let's look at something else. So we've already wasted forty minutes on something that didn't work. We'll uh, we'll figure that out later. Um, let's let's look at the tasks. So I've got a number of tasks here. Let's uh, let's see what we can look at those. So I wanted to look at data structures today. So we've got uh, a couple of tasks here that require more than one thing to do. Let's see if I can change my tasks as well under customize. Um, Let's see. All right, so I've added this fixed wiring. That's a good one to use. This has got three tasks. So we're going to start off with a scan for zero. I want to, oh, sorry, it's going to be a four byte value. All right, so I'm going to look for the, the, the data structure around each of these tasks. So I'll start off, going to go to electrical and fix the wiring. So I've done a scan for zero because I've finished zero out of three tasks. Now let's do some wiring here. All right, and now we've done one out of three. So we're going to look for things that were one, but now they're zero. Sorry, they were zero, but now they're one. All right, we'll keep scanning for that. So a lot of these addresses are changing. And if I keep scanning for one, I'm going to narrow those down. 
Okay. Now, but let's go ahead and go move on to the next task. So we go to admin and we'll fix the wiring there. All right, so now we've finished two out of three tasks. Let's scan for two. All right, so one of these are going to be related to our um, our task here. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and we'll do the last one. That's why I wanted to do the wiring because I knew there would be three things to to. Uh, to do, and that gives us more things to scan with. Okay, so now we can scan for three. All right, so it's gonna be one of these. And what I could do, I could try to change these. So let's change this to a two. All right, that didn't do anything. I'll change it. Oh, didn't mean to add that, but let's change it back to three, um, just so we don't, you know, screw anything else up. All right, let's change this value to a two. That also didn't do anything. Let's change it back. And let's try this one. There we go. See, my wiring task now says it's two out of three instead of three out of three. I can change that back to zero. Um, one. Two, and as you notice, when I get to two out of three, this thing uh, lights up again, and I can I can rewire. All right, so this is going to be our our uh, fixed wiring task. <clears throat> but let's look at what accesses this address. So again, we've got some some uh, registers with an offset. We can see here e ECX plus twenty eight is where the uh, the number of completed tasks is stored for this particular task. So ECX is this address. And if we look here, it's ESI plus 28, but it is again, the same address. So I'm gonna copy that. Let's add this manually. So this address space is going to be the, um, this address space, uh, this 16867280, that's going to be the address of memory where the um, object for this particular task is stored. So again, we're going to go into this dissect data structure. Let's make a new structure. And offset 28. All right, this is where this is stored. Now, there's a couple interesting things about this data structure here. Let's give us some more space here. So we can see this is a two. So this is how many are completed. And see, there's a three right under it. So we can make a pretty good guess that the three is how many need to be completed. And the two is how many we've completed so far. So I could, for example, change this to a two. Now I only had to do two wiring tasks and they're both completed. Let's change that back to a three. A couple other things, uh, I was playing around with this yesterday. All of these uh, probably have something to do with this particular object. But if we look at some of just the simple numbers that we change. So watch what the, uh, the task is here. Oh, not the pointer. Um, where did that go? Here we go. All right, so let's change this 11 to, say, a 10. So now instead of fixing wiring in the security, it wants me to fix wiring in MedBay. Um, or I can change this 12 to, say, a 10. Now instead of um, fixed wiring, it wants me to empty garbage. So we can see that this, this in this data structure, we've got some variables for, like, what where the uh, where the task needs to be completed and what the task actually needs to be. <coughs> so we can take those addresses and we, we can do things with those. Um, I just thought it was interesting to kind of point that out and see where those are. I don't know what all these others are. Uh, again, it would just take some trial and error 
to change the values, see what happens. Um, and with enough time and enough guesses and enough uh, correct guesses, eventually, you know, you can figure out the entire structure of this game object and make some changes to that. <clears throat> okay, so that's um, that's a couple things. I don't know why that pointer scan didn't work. Let me, I'm going to try it one more time. Just because I want to show how you can, you know, preserve this data from one game to the next. And the pointers are how we're going to do that. And if we got a minute, I'm gonna I want to look at data structure some more in uh, in another game. All right. So let's see. Let's start off with a new scan. We're gonna do a float. All right. All right. So we'll s attach to the process. Don't forget that. Okay, let's, we can probably limit some of these, making sure this value is still zero. Um, okay, let's become an imposter. gone up now it's gone down now it's back to zero all right let's go find somebody to kill all right so it's going to be bigger than 10 kill scan and then it keeps decreasing Okay, so there's our kill cooldown once again. Let's see if we can change it. All right, that works. Change that back to zero. Awesome. Okay, let's try this again. So we're going to roll right over our data. We'll do another generate a map. We have our new pointer map. <clears throat> and we'll do a new pointer scan. All right, so we're scanning this map. Offset must be in with 44. Okay. There we go. All right, so that didn't take that long. Uh, I don't know why it was taking so long before, and we, we still have over a million records returned. Um, all right, so we've got our scan. We've got our map. Let's close, and let's try it all again. Yeah, my computer's being laggy. I could have sworn I closed everything that was running, but oh well. Okay, we will do a new scan. We're going to start off with zero. Attach to the process first, of course. We'll keep our list. All right, we'll scan for zero. Now, as soon as I become an imposter, my scan's going to jump up to 10. So I'm going to look for something bigger than 7. scan then we want something that continues to decrease
All right, and then we are back to zero. Okay, it's probably this one. So let's test it. Yep, that is it. We set that back to zero. Generate a new pointer map. Maybe the fourth time is the charm, right? Or the fifth time, or I don't know, I've lost count. All right. Okay, so we've got our pointer map. Now we're going to do a new scan. Let me make sure I'm selecting the right file. So this is the second time. This is the map we just generated. We're going to compare with the results from our last scan. Using the address from last time. Our offset still should be 44. All right, let's scan this. <clears throat> okay, that's what I was expecting. It should have been quick like that. So let's try one of these pointers. If I change this to 10, and nothing happened. Fantastic. Just add all these first ones here. Let's see if any of these work. I already tried that one. Nothing. Nothing. Hmm, that did something, but. All right, well, whatever uh, whatever's going on, it worked last night. Um, hmm. Oh, okay, it's bringing these, okay. My bad, it's bringing these in as the wrong data type. That, I think, was my problem. So let's, uh, let's change this to a float. Now let's see if that works. Okay, so I was doing it all right all along, but I was looking at the wrong data type. That That is important. So I was trying to insert a byte into a float, and it didn't know what to do with it. So that was my problem. All right, so we've got this pointer here. Um, that should work. So I've frozen the value for the pointer. Let's turn the speed hack back on. I left that off because I was a little worried that was screwing me up. Okay, now I kill, and yeah, you saw it went to 15 and back to zero. Now, the point of that, if we close this again and relaunch Among Us, so again, this pointer, so what we start off with... <laughs> is the game assembly DLL, and then there's an offset into that. And then from there, there's a pointer to a pointer to a pointer, which points to the, uh, the address that we're looking for. All right, so now if I make myself an imposter here, and I attach back to the process, so this pointer should still work now. And it does. So these previous addresses that we used, they're, they're no longer valid. But this uh, this pointer address does work. Uh, okay, let's unfreeze that. There we go. So now that I've got this pointer, <clears throat> if I were to launch a game, a public game, and I were the imposter, I should be able to control the kill cooldown. 
Now, most of the cheats in uh, Among Us, from what I've seen, uh, they will work online, but mostly only if you're hosting the game. I think there are some things you can do if, whether you're not hosting or whether you're hosting or not, but if you're the one hosting the game, you have more control over the variables, and so you, you, can, you can do this stuff. Uh, but yeah, this this is a, it's a cool little hack um, for this game if you're the imposter. Uh, something else we can look at. Um, yeah, we can we can keep going. So you notice before we can turn ourselves you know on and off here in free mode. Let's let's assume that the variable for whether or not I'm an imposter is is uh, something we can modify as well. So let's look for some bytes in memory. Right now I'm not the imposter, so I'm going to assume it's going to be a 0 or a 1. So I'll start my first scan for a 0. Let's see, let's remove these. And I'm going to make myself imposter. So now that I'm an imposter, Let's assume that's changed to a one. So we're gonna scan for one. We'll do this a few times. All right, now let's go back to not an imposter and scan for zero. We'll do that a few times. And you can see right here, this is our count. It continues to go down. It was originally around, uh, I don't know, 50, 60,000, something like that, maybe more. I wasn't watching. All right, but it's going down. Be an imposter again, so now it should be back to one, and we just keep doing this back and forth till we get just a handful of variables to worry about. So scan for zero because I'm not an imposter. All right, we're down to 23. Um, something else we can do, we can kind of move around a bit. Some variables will change just by you moving around. All right, let's go back. Come an imposter. Scan for one. All right, we're down to 13. All right, we can bring this down a little bit more. All right, so there were a few of these that changed before the others did. Trying to get this list down as much as I can before we try them. Okay, so we're down to, let's turn the speed hack back on. We're down to nine variables. And let's go here where I can see everything. So I'm, I'm a couple things as an imposter, you, you have the option to sabotage. You can also kill, and then you also have vents. So you can jump into, uh, into vents to move around as the imposter. Okay, so now we're down to four. So let's uh, let's take a look at these. Let's see what happens if I just change this value to zero. Up, oh, I still see them, but my options as an imposter have gone away. So this is probably my imposter variable. <clears throat> okay, so now that I've found that. Um, I could do the same thing with the pointers that I did before. Uh, watch those data types, though. That's where I fucked up last time. Uh, in order to find a pointer, and then I could um, freeze that, and I could join a public game, or I could start up a public game at least, and make myself the imposter and go around and do imposter-type things. <coughs> it will screw up the gameplay a bit, um, because you might end up with an extra imposter if you're the one. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's a couple things you can do with Among Us just by you know finding the uh, finding the right variables and, and controlling those, using pointers and the pointer scan in order to keep those values from one um, one session to the next because the addresses change. But if we can start off with that again, we start off with the um, we don't know the the base address of each DLL as it's loaded into memory. Uh, but as it is loaded into memory, if we can find something at a certain offset with inside inside that DLL, uh, and then from there, pointers to pointers to pointers until we, we find something that's consistent between each time you run the game, 
uh, until we get to this this value, and then we can turn ourselves on or off as an imposter. Let's, let's see what happens if I make myself not an imposter, and then change this back to one. There we go. Sabotage menus back up, and all right. So the kill's not showing up. That's interesting. That could be another one of these. So there's a couple other variables here that are probably also related to being an imposter. Let's turn these to one and see if the kill menu comes back. Well, it did. All right. So there's probably some more work we could do with that. But let's uh, let's go ahead and switch gears a minute and look at another game. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about data structures. So I've used a salt cube before. A salt cube is a nice, uh, nice way to practice some some uh, game hacks. It's free. It's open source. You can run your own server, so you can have a lot more control over what's going on. Uh, let's just do a. I'm gonna, all right, I'm going to start up a game. We're just going to do some terrible bots because I don't want them killing me um, right off the start. All right, let's attach to this. Okay, we don't need any of these pointers anymore. Oh, I should have said no to delete them. All right, so what I want to do now, I want to find the um, <coughs> player game object. So before, when I did this, I went through and I found where the health was and kind of showed you how you can control that. Uh, had a bit of trouble with the online version um, when I was playing with somebody else, but let me uh, let me find a grenade so I can damage myself here. Let's see, there should be some grenades around here somewhere. So what, what I'm gonna look for is, I'm gonna find my health in memory again. And then from there, um, look at the base address of where that's stored. And, um, all right, there's usually grenades all over the place. May have, may need to pick a different map if I don't find a grenade here. Ah, there we go. Okay, so got a grenade. My health is currently at 100. So let's scan for that. I'll throw a grenade. All right, did myself some damage. So now my health is 47. There we go. So this is easy to find in this game. Um, let's see what happens. Oops. If I change this value to 100, there we go. My health's back to 100. All right, let's find out what access is this. So again, we can see there. For, there's a consistent offset for each of these. So this is uh, you know some stuff that runs every CPU tick. We can see we got EBX plus F8 and ESI plus F8. EBX is this address. And if we look at this other instruction, ESI is the same address. So if we look at this address space, we use the memory viewer, dissect the data structure. Let's call this the uh, player object. Okay, and the, let's see, what I say health was F8, I think. There we go. So there's our health. Let's, all right, that works. Um, there are some other values here that are probably all related to your player. Let's see what we can find. So I've currently got seven rounds in my chamber. Let's see if we can see a seven somewhere. Um, it should be in here somewhere. Okay. 
Okay, I don't immediately see it, but what I can do, I can go ahead and scan for it and find it. I'm sure it's in this structure, um, but I may need a little help finding it. All right, so I'm gonna do a scan. So these are all the current addresses that have a seven in the value. I will fire my shotgun. I'm gonna look for something that is now six. Fire again, and now let's look for something that is a five. All right, looks like it's probably one of these top two. All right, so there's there's two of them that show up here. There's a good chance one of these is just a pointer to the other, uh, or one of these may be a uh, the the display value, and one of them is the actual value that that could be. Uh, but let's uh, find out what writes or accesses this address. Okay, in this case, we're just comparing some values. That doesn't look right. Maybe this one. This 2BC. Let's see. All right, so this, I may have picked one more in depth than I was looking for. Because this is EBX plus ECX times four plus an offset. So that's gonna be, um, okay. La we'll come back to that. Um, all right, but let's, let's look at some other things. So you can see as I move around, there's some other values that change. And one of the things that might be interesting to find is your X, Y, and Z coordinates. Now we can see some of these just change when I move. I bet it's not getting some of these data types right. Let's see if we can change some of these. This might be a float. No, that's not right. Now I'll I will uh, I'll be honest. I actually didn't try any of this in a salt cube um until i got on the show so you know we like to do things live here and uh hope hope things go right mm. and it's a very possible I may have picked the wrong value out at some point. Okay, let's see. There's a 14. This is, I think, how many rounds I have left to reload with. Okay, so that works. Let's see what happens if I just change some other values here. Oh, there we go. That gave me some armor, it looks like. Let's see, there was a grenade around here somewhere, wasn't there? All right. There we go. So I found my grenade. So it looks like I changed the type of weapon I have, but I don't have any ammo for it. <coughs> so I've changed from the from the one-handed pistol or the single pistol to the dual pistols, um, but I don't have any ammo for that. So that's it's one of these values I, I adjusted, changed that. And I'm just changing things, just to see what happens. Pretty sure that all of these, okay. So all these here, seem to have something to do with your ammo. Um, like this one controlled grenades. This one is controlling my pistol. Um, so there is a pointer here that's pointing to the value five. All right, looks like this is going to be actually my shotgun. So this is probably 
Yeah, I'm not sure what that's pointing to. Uh, but that's where that's where the ammo is stored for the shotgun. It's it's a pointer. I was looking for an exact value. So yeah, there's there's several things here we we can go around. We can change. Um, let's see if I can change this to a five. There we go. Yeah. So there's. Oops. Uh, I want to make keep it as a pointer, but just change what it's pointing to. Uh, looks like it. It's in hex, so a ten is sixteen. <clears throat> so yeah, um, again, so all of this data structure probably has something to do with the player, and we can go through and explore all these and figure out what they do and be able to control more things about our player, like our MO. Uh, with a bit more trial and error, we could figure out our um, which of these control like our location in our X, Y, and Z coordinates. And if we find those, we could try we could try changing those values and see if we can teleport around the map possibly um and maybe even you know figure out how to fly uh i'm gonna i'm gonna work on that in uh assault cube and, and actually in pony island which i had demoed previously uh it's similar now i have looked at pony island and the xyz coordinates aren't saved in this player data structure um so we have to figure that out some other way uh, I would like to find my XYZ coordinates here. Let me see. So I have a feeling that they're around here. If you watch this value, see it says 5.5, .5, but when I jump, it goes up, and then it goes down. And when I go up steps, we can also see it's going up. Let's see what happens if I just change this value. Nope, it didn't let me change it. Let's add this to our list. Nope, oh, wrong thing. Um add to address list let's see uh, let's go up some stairs here what happens if I freeze this so it's doing some weird things with the graphics I don't know if you can see it flickering it's not happy with what I did um, so that's Yeah, there, there may be some more we can do with that. If we can find out, for example, what writes to this. Sorry, I'm going to do that back here. So there's a lot of different functions, but let's say when I jump. Oh, and it seems I seem to have locked it up. Yep, I have locked everything up. Um, so that did not work out well. Yeah, it didn't like uh, being attached to. Let's try that one more time. Let's find out what writes to this address. And no, having computer troubles today. It doesn't seem to be able to uh, run while I'm attached to it for some reason. I may have screwed around with the uh, the player object too much. All right, but if I wasn't having trouble, I could probably find where the jump function is uh, based on, you know, when I jump, what writes to that address space, and then, you know, kind of go back from there and figure out, uh, you know, what else changes when we jump to see if maybe we can, um, like, like we we looked at a couple weeks ago the, tutorial game in cheat engine where we were able to find a value as a one or a zero when you jumped and we could you know freeze that value at one or um, replace the code so it doesn't actually bring you back down uh, there's some things we can do with that so yep uh, things didn't go exactly the way I planned today but hey that happens 
uh, but hopefully we learned a little bit more. The the pointer scan and the pointer map I, I thought was uh, pretty interesting because it lets you, um, you know, find a value, but be able to find it again next time you load the program. And then the, um, the data structure, being able to find like that base address of an object and then looking it up. And then you can just go through and take some notes and look at the interesting addresses, change the values, see what happens. Uh, things will break. Um, I, I've seen that, you know, multiple times I've had things crash on me or freeze up as you, you start randomly changing addresses in memory, things will break, but just, you know, take some good notes and, um, once, once you find those values and once you find those data objects in particular, the other things will be easier to find. <clears throat> and then you can work from there, reverse engineer, figure out what's going on and make your changes. So I think that's about it for today. Um, I may do a little bit more on, on Cheat Engine next week, but then I want to get to actually some reverse engineering of some, some malware, something a little more practical um, related to the type of work that we do. So that will be coming up soon. Um, I, do, I, I do have a sponsor for a CTF. Uh, so I've got to work that out. We've still got to meet and figure out exactly when that's going to be, but we've got a CTF coming up. Uh, it is going to be kind of centered around video games, which is why I've been doing a lot of video game stuff lately. Uh, so that will be coming up in the next month or so. I'm hoping to actually meet with the sponsor this week and I can give you a specific dates and details next week when, uh, um, when, when I have those. So thanks. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you want to follow more of my content, if you go to bamctf.com, let me pull that up here. So bamctf.com, this is where I've got links to all my content. If you want to see it, uh, you've got a command line interface you can access. <laughs> These are the things you can view. There's also a menu here if you want to be lame. <laughs> Uh, but you've got links to my to YouTube uh, as well as my uh, Twitch channel and then Twitter where all my updates are. Um, there's some crack me's that uh, we've gone through in the past. Uh, um, there's some hacks or some CTF challenges from B-Sides Houston 2020. And then I did a demo a while back on zero login. And uh, this is the PCAP that I used for that demo. Uh, so all the stuff you're watching now, if you're watching this live, uh, is on Twitch, but it's all being archived to YouTube within within 24 hours. Uh, you'll see that content on there as well. So um, I think I think that is it for this week. I'll try to get some more content ready for next week. And thanks for watching. Um, if you're in a CTF and you get stuck, don't forget to always try harder. Don't panic, and always always RTFM. So thanks again for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye.